Hello, Baronipitous here um, with uh, another video for the tabletop RPG shelf. Um, this time I want to kind of show the, uh, the basically the, the supplement books uh, that I have uh, here. So I have five, well actually I have six books, but I'm showing five at, at least at the moment here. And I have them in, rel in I think, um, re release order as far as I can remember anyway. Um, but yeah, these are basically like, you know, books that add more monsters or more character or more player options or more just other things, essentially. Uh, I don't have all of the, like, you know, supplemental source books. Like, I don't have the Sword Coast, I don't have the Sword, Sword Coast Adventures Guide or anything like that. But in general, if there's a book that says Names Guide to Something, um, I generally like to try to get those. So kind of going one at a time here. Volo's Guide to Monsters. Um, mostly, so it's... Just it's kind of like you know it just sort of adds to the monster manual really. Um, oh, what I what I do uh, a couple things I really do like about this book is that in, in the in the first section it kind of talks about different. Uh, it goes more in depth into certain kinds of monsters. Like there's a whole section about beholders, um, and like a additional lore and like and, and uh, you know a sample of beholder layer. And it does the same thing for. Uh, let's see what what all what all do we got here? Uh, does the same thing for uh, giants, gnolls, goblinoids, hags, kobolds, mind players, orcs, and yuanti. And also has some uh, player options, additional species or races to um, to play as. But I, I you know I always appreciate extra lore. I will admit I haven't really used this section all that much. Um, I usually bring out Volo's Guide to Monsters mostly for either certain monsters that are in here towards the back of the book or especially for the um uh for the extra player options um because in here um uh, there are extra there are extra species you can play as uh you got uh, you know like you got the 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 asmr the sort of like celestial born like with you know celestial ancestry uh the furbolg the goliath the uh the kenku um Lizard folk, uh, Tabaxi. If you want to, you can be a cat person in D and I'm sure I'm skipping. A, I'm sure I'm skipping a few here, but uh, Tritons are fun. And then just kind of, you know, if you want to be a goblin or you want to be a kobold or or something, uh, you want to be a Yuanti. There's there's uh, there's stats and options for that. But then the rest of this book is the sort of a guide to mon is like, you know, more monsters. Um, this Volo's got uh, the monsters in here tend to, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love cute, you know, sort of like things like this, like a, a salamander with a sword and every fire newt, yeah. Um, this book tends to focus more on lower level uh, creatures, so uh, monsters can generally be between level one and thirty. I think the highest is thirty. That's a Tarask. Um and these tend to kind of be more in like the lower half of of that, uh, one to ten or one to fifteen or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, just some general, like, stats for uh, different kinds of non-player characters as well, like NPCs and all that. And they have some very helpful guides on, you know, stat blocks by creature type, stat blocks by challenge rating, by level, by environment, and things like that. So, and also, uh, there is a bit, like, Volo is a, Volo is a character in, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons lore, so to speak. You know, these are these are all sort of, like, Another thing too is that um, these books tend to have little uh, little notes scattered throughout the whole thing uh, that were written by either, in this case, Volo or, or somebody else, uh, and th it's always just good fun. I just kind of uh, see that uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Xanathar is this beholder here with a pet goldfish, fancy goldfish or whatever. This is just a mishmash of all kinds of things. I usually bring that and like I usually bring this out for the extra um, uh, subclass options. Like there, like there are different. There, are, this book has new flavors of barbarian, new flavors of bard, new flavors of of fighter, essentially uh, that you can be, which is which is really cool. There's some cool stuff in there. There's things like samurai. There's things like uh, um, I love the roguish archetypes in here because there's like the inquisitive and the mastermind. If you want to go for like a Sherlock Holmes or Moriarty kind of vibe, um, and things like that. Uh, other than that, there's just a lot, and like there's more options for like you know. If you want to sort of have more of a story to your character, um, things like that, uh, more tools for the for the for the dungeon master, um, just a lot of random random things, uh, you know, traps, you know, lo you know, low, very low level magic items, um, you know, new options for downtime activities, new spells, things like that, right? 
So, and, uh, and also like, you know, just a bunch of names if you want to try to, you know, if you, if you need help coming up with a name and it's sorted by, you know, by species here. So I like this. It's a fun book. Mostly use it for the subclasses. Um, but yeah, there's that. Um, Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. Mordenkainen is a cool, a cool, uh, character. Uh, it kind of goes between dimensions. So this is kind of, uh... This is kind of like the second half of Volo's Guide to Monsters. If, if Volo's Guide to Monsters focused on lower level monsters, this one, Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, focuses on higher level monsters, which I was very excited about. And there's a lot of lore about various conflicts throughout the cosmos. The Blood War is the ongoing, it's the eternal war between demons and devils. And there is definitely a difference in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, other conflicts include things like. Uh, um, uh, like conflict between elves and like and, and dwarves and and things like that. Just a lot of uh, and there are a couple of uh, um, player options too. Dwarves and Durgar. Durgar are like the deep, deep underground dwarves. Um, Gith and their endless war. So and and things like that. I'll admit, I although I was excited about all this like extra like cosmic lore and things like that. I have <laughs> I read very little of it. I'll admit. Um, because I, I do use this book mostly as a way to sort of insert extremely powerful creatures <laughs> into, into my games, uh, cre like very, very powerful and just like way out there, um, stuff. Um, you got, got the demon lords in here, um, the, the art, like various arch devils and, and things like that. So... Lot, lots of uh, I I love these like there's there's like normal elementals but these are like elemental myrmidons which are essentially armored elementals um, these are among my favorite creatures in these in this whole book oh and <laughs> gif the, the space faring hippo people with uh, blunderbuss um, so delightful I love it all kinds of like random things that are cool or creepy or just funny uh, and so on and so forth all right so. Yeah, kind of more on the cosmic scale of things, which I love. I'm always a fan of that. So, very cool. Very happy to have that. Uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, I have come to appreciate Tasha as a character. She's she's a cool, like, witch character. I believe she was, like, adopted by Baba Yaga or something like that. And just kind of is basically a character who's about as who's as powerful if not more so than uh, Mordenkainen, and so there, I think there's a little bit of a like respectful rivalry there. I think there's a picture maybe somewhere in here of uh, Tasha and Mordenkainen playing chess, and she's like beating him or something. Uh, one th uh, what I usually use this book mostly for is kind of kind of the same thing as with Xanathar's Guide to Everything, because Tasha's cold and everything. There's a lot of random things in here, especially a new class, Artificer. I love Artificer. Um, Really cool. So what it sounds like, you you mat you build things and infuse magic into them. And also there are a lot of other um, like sub like subclasses for each uh, class as well, um, and like you know different flavors of each class. So to add on to what's already in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So there's with the core with the player's handbook plus Xanathar's Guide to Everything plus Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. You've got like at least half a dozen different like flavors of each class different like subclasses um which is really cool like you can like the the possibilities are really quite quite um probably endless honestly um other other random things i don't really like there's some cool stuff in here like group patrons or having or like rules for sidekicks or uh, i think that like yeah like magic items rules for like magic tattoos and things like that I'll admit I don't really use it them. I, I do love this picture. Uh, this is this guy is casting magic missile, but it's like it has the appearance of chickens attacking, and there's like some rules for that, like making your spells look different and whatever, um, but not act different. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. This is the picture. Uh, this is Tasha, and this is Mordenkainen, and uh, one of Tasha's pieces is just is uh, destroying Mordenkainen's, and I just I love the smug look on her face, and he's just like you know. A bit appalled by this. Oh yeah, Tasha prepares to win another game of wizardly chess against her rival Mordenkainen. Um, probably one of my favorite uh, pictures in this whole book, if not uh, like any. It's it's cool just seeing these two like you know arcane titans essentially um, duking it out in chess and and everything. But yeah, um, like you know strange dimensions and so on and so forth. 
Um, yeah, lots of, uh, yeah. Oh, puzzles. Yeah, I forgot that was, that was in here as well. Um, I love puzzles. I should use that more often. But uh, anyway, yeah, Tasha's cold and everything. I love this book. I love the stuff that's in it. Uh, here's a book that I'm happy to have, but I haven't really used. <laughs> this band's Treasury of Dragons is basically just like more stuff about dragons. Um, I don't know a lot about what, what's in this book, except I know there's like more stuff about like dragon magic, uh, different different kinds of dragons, uh, dragon artifacts, and like dragon lore and, and stuff like that. Um, one big thing that this adds is that so in D and D there's there's uh, chromatic dragons, you know, red, blue. Like you know, red, blue, white, green, and black. Um, they they're usually the more evil dragons. And then there's metallic dragons, which are like gold, silver, bronze, copper, and um, gold, silver, bronze, copper. Uh, anyway, five different uh, five different metals, and uh, they tend to be like more good aligned dragons. But in in this one, we're introduced to gem dragons. And gem dragons are more neutral. I can't remember what all the... Like, there's amethyst and emerald dragon... Amethyst dragon, emerald dragon. And five different kinds of, of gem dragons. Oh, yeah. I'm just kind of going over all the amethyst dragon layer. Uh, oh, yeah. It's talking about... Yeah, black dragons. Going over all the different kinds of dragons in here. Which is really cool. Um, you know, I love the extra extra lore. The extra things that they, you know, talk, you know, talk about in here and everything. Um... Yeah, and then bestiary, just like more dragon type creatures, essentially. Um, so yeah, uh, of all kinds. Uh, there is, I know there is, there is also a there's a uh, there's a book that's focused on giants, which I do not have. Um, I'm considering getting that. Uh, oh yeah, horde mimic, basically a mimic that looks, uh, basically a mimic that looks like a dragon's horde or like a horde. Like I love uh, monsters that like look like treasure. Um, it's really funny. Um, great worms. Um, yeah, it's such uh, the gem dragons are so pretty. Um, but yeah, uh, even if I get uh, the uh, the the book about giants, Big B's like uh, Big B's book of giants or something like that, Glory of the Giants. I don't know. I might not use that as much either. But I I like being able to have access to that kind of uh, lore and stuff. And then. Uh, oh, right. I completely forgot. One second here. <clears throat> there is um, another uh, names book of name, um, names book of something book I have is Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Um, I have run the cur the uh, Gothic Horror Adventure Curse of Strahd like a do at least half a dozen times at this point. And this, um, you know, expands on... You know, my wife and I are fans of, like, you know, gothic horror and, you know, and things like that. And this is basically a bunch of different domains of dread. Um, such a cool concept where uh, basically each of these domains is, like, a a custom-made purgatory for a really, really evil person. And the their purgatory is, is designed to torment them. Uh, you know, kind of tease them with what they want, but they'll never get it because they they were punished by... The forces that be, by the powers that be, uh, for their their hubris, their pride, their you know, their treachery, whatever it might might be, and they're just sort of stuck in these domains, and uh, each domain is a different uh, kind of like brand of 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 horror, and you have and you have to kind of like, um, I, I'm currently running a campaign with this right now where I'm having the having the party kind of go through various. Um, domains of dread as they try to figure out who who is who is the who's the, the sort of the dark lord of this domain who is whose purgatory is this and then they and, and figure stuff out there's some uh but yeah generally just kind of more cool uh spooky scary things and also like miniature domains of dread as well um so i love this book um been running uh, i'm currently yeah like i said i'm currently running a campaign on that uh and yeah um the final book i have to show is this one so this is basically, if I'm not mistaken, um, so this is this is essentially the monster section of Volo's Guide to Monsters and Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes put together in one book. Um, I think there are also some uh, unique books in here as well. Uh, sorry, unique monsters in here as well, as far as I know. But so 
This is a bit of a repeat of Morning Kindness Tome of Foes, but also with a bit of like um, uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters mixed in here. I haven't looked at this book very much because, again, I you know this is sort of a little bit of a repeat. Uh, I decided to get this anyway because this kind of makes things a little more convenient. Um, this is a more recent acquisition. So this does make things more convenient where if I just want monsters from Volos or Mordenkainen's, then I can just use this book instead of either one of those. And then I can use the other books for the other stuff that, that they have in them. So... Yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, books to go through in just like you know 15 ish minutes, but uh, yeah, there you go. I wanted to kind of like have one video for all the various like supplemental books that I have, um, and uh, yeah, the um, at this point it's basically uh, as far as D and D books go, um, it's going to be mostly adventures. You know, I'll, I'll talk briefly about my experience with various adventures whether i've run them or played them or not and all that kind of stuff so thank you very much for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, until next time all the best